Well, good evening, everyone. How are you doing this evening? It's Wednesday night, and I hope that uh, you've been having a great week. If you're just joining us, I want you to take just a minute and take time to share this right now so that somebody else can join with us. I've got a wonderful word for you this evening. And um, when you're in the middle of the battle and you're in the middle of trouble, I want to show you that there's hope for you. And you don't have to fear. You don't have to worry. And um, you don't want to miss this tonight. You want to take time to join with us. And so just hit the share button. Share with your friends. Share with your circle of influence that you have. And we're going to get started right here. We're not going to waste any time. That way we can, uh, we can get to the good stuff quickly. I, I heard this story just today, and it just moved me so much. It's with the, kind of the basis of me giving you this word tonight. I heard this testimony of this gentleman, and he said that he was working on a vehicle, and something happened. I didn't say exactly what he was doing to the vehicle, but something happened in the vehicle or while he was underneath the hood working on it that it caught on fire, and when it did, it caught him on fire from his waist up. And uh, he was out in the country. He, there was some people there, and those people, uh, they began to try to help him, but he was, he was burning. And uh, he said that his flesh was uh, first, second, and third degree burns completely from his waist up. They was trying to get the fire out. They was trying to help him. And he said they took a water hose and began to try to rinse him off to try to get the fire off of him and help him. And he said his skin, his flesh, was literally falling off of him with the pressure of the water hose just running against him. They put him in a vehicle and they took him to the nearest hospital where they began to work on him. And um, they was packing him in ice. They was doing everything they can. He said, I was in absolute fire. He said, my body was hurting so bad. I, I didn't know what to do. They was trying to pack me in ice. They was packing me in wet towels, trying to help me. And he said, I told him it's not enough. Open the window, get a breeze blowing through here. You know, he said he was still able to speak to him. And uh, they was afraid that when they opened the window, he was going to try to jump and run. And, and he said, they was afraid I was going to commit suicide because I was in so much pain. And he said, that wasn't the case. He said, I was just hurting so bad and, and in such pressure. And so they began to give him pain medications to try to help him. And, and he said that as he was trying to listen to them and deal with them, that he heard the, the doctor say to the nurses, I cannot give this man any more pain medication. If I do, it'll kill him. Uh, and he said, I thought about that. He said, I thought about the fact that they could do no more to help me. And he said, suddenly there was this scripture that flooded into my mind. And I want to read the scripture that he quoted. I'm going to read the verse, two verses before it, and then I'll read the actual scripture that he quoted out loud. But it says, Psalms 34 verse 17 says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. I don't know how much all is in your life, but, but it covers a quite a large assortment of things in my life. Verse 38 goes on to say, The Lord is nigh or near or close to them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as of a contrite spirit. And this is the verse that he quoted. This is the verse that was the verse that was a difference maker in his life. He said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He said, I quoted that scripture out loud. And he said, when I quoted that scripture, he said, the pain stopped in my body instantly. He said, I literally went from being in such terrible pain that they could not give me any more medication, that I was, I couldn't get cold. I couldn't, it was just horrible. And he said, I quoted that scripture out loud. And he said, instantly the pain stopped in my body. I'm telling you, by this time, I don't know about you, but by this time hearing this man tell this story, my heart is just being moved. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, this is such good stuff. And, and he said, I would said out loud, that feels so good. I'm going to do it again. And so again, he quoted this scripture. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And he said it was like something just swept over my body again. 
He said, from, he said, I didn't have pain that I had to deal with from that point. Here I was in horrible, in horrible shape, but God had made a way where there didn't seem to be any other help for me. And then I looked over at Psalms chapter 9, verse 9, and it says, The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. I don't know about your life, and I don't know about your family, and I don't know about your situation, but I'm going to tell you that in my life, I have trouble that has arisen, and I didn't even know how to handle it. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to have a comeback for it. I questioned myself. I questioned everything about my life. But this is what I found out, that nobody can run from trouble. Nobody can run from trouble. There is no place that is far enough that you can run and there is no trouble or no place that trouble will not find you. You can say, I'm going to go to a safe place. I'm going to go to a safe a little place in my life. But I'm going to tell you that trouble will find you no matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter what country you live in, no matter what city you live in, no matter what nationality you are. It doesn't matter your skin color. Trouble comes to all of us. It's called life. As a matter of fact, life is filled with one trouble after another trouble. You might be thinking to yourself, now that's not sounding too positive, Pastor. Give me something positive. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you something positive. But what I want you to know right up front is that you can overcome trouble in your life. And it's not unusual to have problems in your situation. It's not unusual for you to have things that arise in you, in your family, arise in your workplace, arise in your health. That's not unusual. The enemy will try to put you in a corner and say, you're the only one that deals with this kind of stuff. And, and you remember all the good things you did for God. And now look how it hasn't worked out for you. Can I tell you, that's a lie of the enemy. Trouble is part of life. The scripture says, man's days are few and full of trouble. So anyone that's trying to tell you that there's a problem-free life, that, that you can live a life that's without problems, is lying to you. They're selling you a, bit of good, a bill of goods that's not truth. Problems are no respecter of persons. They have no regard for anyone. A problem-free life is only available when we pass from this life into a cemetery and if we've made ourselves right with God. Problems come whether you invite them or you don't invite them. You, you, some, somebody said, well, you're going to get everything you sow. Well, that's, that's true. There, there is a principle that you can't get around. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. But what I'm going to tell you is this right here. Whatever a man sows, he reaps, but trouble still will crop up in your life. Weeds of trouble will still be in your flower garden. Weeds of trouble will still arise <clears throat> in your corn patch. Uh, and and <clears throat> they are often given to you to prove you, to help you to grow and to strengthen you. Problems come and they, they sometimes cause you to dig down deep in your life. <clears throat> they give you a bid to conquer something that has been challenging you. Life is, is, a, is made up of trying to be a problem solver. But I believe the believer who has surrendered his life to Jesus Christ has every problem in a situation that is a miracle in disguise. Every problem is a miracle in disguise. Every situation that's come against you is something that's waiting to show the faithfulness of God or to strengthen and grow you to the next level where you're fixing to go to. God will deliver you from a problem after you have been able to walk in that period. You know, I, I thought about the, the children of Israel when they walked into the promised land. And this is what the word of God says. The word of God says that the Lord said, I will leave your enemies there so that you don't conquer the land all at one time. Because if you do, that wild animals will take over it before you're able to grow into it. Can I tell you that there is some situations in your life that you're dealing with that God has left there to, to help you, to grow you, and also so that you're not overwhelmed with the blessings of God and it ruins your life. You ever seen a kid like that that's just spoiled? 
maybe not not saying your kids or in your family, but but you know you've been around those kids that they've been given everything. They've never had to work for anything, never had to do anything, and and they just think the world owes them something. If we're not careful, we can be the same way with our blessings from God. We can be the same exact way that God looks at us and says, man, you are spoiled, rotten. Sometimes he makes you have to work for some things so that you understand and appreciate the value of them. <clears throat> I looked at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God did not deliver them out of their problem. He did not keep them, maybe I should say it this way, God didn't keep them from going into the furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was, had to walk through the furnace and they walked out of the furnace. Sometimes the problems that you're dealing with in your life, God's with you. He was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But sometimes you have to walk through pur purposes and journeys in your life that you won't be delivered from them. You won't be able to escape them. You'll have to walk through them, but it will prove you and it will prove God in the process. <clears throat> problems can make you better or problems can make you bitter. Your problems can build you up or they can break you down. But the mystery of the matter is that every problem has an expiration date. Every problem has an end to it. No problem is endless and will never stop. But everything has a day that it's the final cutoff day and it's the time that it'll all be over with. People don't know this secret and they don't understand it and so they give up hope in the middle of the situation. Rather than keeping their eye focused on the day that they're gonna be able to overcome this situation or the expiration date will finally show up, too oftentimes they'll throw up their hands, they'll quit, they'll say it's not worth the battle, it's not worth the fight. I've been there. I know exactly how that feels to say, I don't feel like going another step. I just wanna stop today. I just, I just wanna get off this merry-go-round. I wanna get off this train. I wanna stop this madness. But if I will hang on and I will not give up, mama, if you're praying a prayer for that child, don't give up. If you're praying a prayer for that spouse, don't give up. If you're believing for God to intervene in your financial situation, let me tell you something. The hand of the enemy can only control your finances so long and then he'll have to release his hand. When God says enough is enough, the scripture says that God will intervene. He will come to your rescue. He is an ever-present help in time of need. Sometimes God, God's process of deliverance may appear as a challenge, but many people, they get worried in the process. I think about, I, I, I hear all these stories going on right now with the, with the virus, the, the, the Chinese virus, uh, the coronavirus, and, and I hear people and they're just so worried and their minds just going a hundred different ways and, and what are we going to do and how are we going to overcome? Let me tell you something. Your God is bigger than that. I don't care who you know that was lost to this thing. I don't care about, I care about them. I care about their families and the loss, but I'm not going to be bound by the fear of what might happen or what might happen to me. I don't know what's gonna to happen to me, but what I do know is that my God is gonna walk with me every step of the way and he will deliver me out of all of my afflictions and he's doing the same for you. He's no respecter of persons. Sometimes God's process might seem like it's, it's crazy to you. Like, I don't know, God, why are you doing this to me? I, I don't know how to handle this. I don't know what to say. I don't know where to go. It seems like the boss is always mad at me. I don't know how to overcome this. Let me tell you something. If you'll just relax and let God take care of it, God will intervene. They, they think that the problem is bigger than God. Have you ever felt that way? Well, you might not have said that. You knew better than to say that. You, you wouldn't get up more and say, well, my problem is bigger than God. But the way, that you, the way that you address it or the way that you're ruled by it, what you've said is, my problem is too big for God to handle. That's craziness. Your God's bigger than everything. The Lord Jesus Christ is greater. His name is above every other name. Sickness, disease, every disease that you can name, his name's above that name. Your God is great and greatly to be praised. <clears throat> I wanna give you a little bit of, uh, a little bit of perspective here. It, one thing is that, that I understand and, and that I've seen over the years is is sometimes people will come into the house of God and they are so beat down by their problem. 
by the situation that they're dealing with. Their heads hung down. Their 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 britches are are hanging out the uh, you know dragging the ground so to speak. They 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 don't know what to do. Can I tell you that you must step out of that mindset if you're going to receive something from God. Uh, Brother Nugent, who is my pastor for so many years, he used to say this comment, and it stuck with me, and it changed my thinking, it changed my life. I'm going to tell you that faith is the currency of heaven. You're not going to whine your way to a miracle. You're not going to cry your way to a miracle. I'm telling you, faith is the difference maker. Faith is the currency of heaven, and you have to learn how to use faith. When you come into the house of God, you might feel all down and depressed inside, but what you need to be doing is you need to be rejoicing on the outside. You need to be smiling. You need to be lifting your hands. You say, well, that's not being true, Pastor. That's kind of like fake it till you make it. Well, let me tell you something. When you begin to exalt God and you begin to let joy radiate from your face and radiate from your spirit, before long, it'll begin to change how you feel and how you're thinking inside of you. Begin to exercise faith in your life. You'll leave the same way you came if you don't. Many people, they, 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 they spend all their time in self-pity. Oh, poor old me. Why me? Why did this ever happen to me? I've been a good person. I've lived a good life. I've, I've given all my talents and gifts to God. I've, that, that, that's true. That might be wonderful. But God has his own reasoning why we're in some situations. And we might never know until we cross over to the other side. We might never understand it. But what I do know is that self-pity and hysteria will not solve your issues. Some people will go into a rage. They'll throw tantrums. They'll They'll, they'll abuse God. They'll scream things out at God. They'll, they'll stand outside and holler things out at God. Or maybe they'll stand in their house and holler things at God. That's not going to solve nothing. That's only going to eat you up inside. God wants you to come to him in faith. And he wants you to begin to believe what he can do. Some people become a slave to a prophet. Boy, if I just had prophets so and so speak to me. If I just had that prophet that came through here speaking last year, if that minister, that, that boy, last time he preached a message to me, whoo, man, it just pushed me over the top. If you're not careful, you'll become a slave to a prophet. Oh, I know some of you, that's revenue right now. You're thinking, I, I, you know, you, you're going against what a prophet can do in a prophet's ministry. No, no, no. I'm thankful for that. But don't become a slave to that. Jesus Christ is the answer it's Jesus Christ that the Word of God's talking about when it says that He will help you and that He will solve the problems that come to the righteous, that He will be there to help you in your afflictions. Every man and every woman will fight his or her own battle. Men of God can assist you. They can help you. They can speak an encouraging word to you. I want to speak an encouraging word to you. But the truth of the matter is, that it's going to be God and it's going to be the way that you approach it, the way that God responds to what you're doing. Some people like to murmur and complain like the children of Israel did in the wilderness. They had rights to murmur and complain. They had a reason to gripe and to fuss. They was in the wilderness. They was hungry. They was thirsty. They, they was aggravated. But that's only got them in trouble. It didn't change the situation. God himself will turn your night into day when their time is right. He will turn your mess into a miracle. He will turn your problems into your next promotion. Your situation today that has you weighed down will become the stepping stone that will take you up into the next place that God has for you to go. The problem that is beating you down today will become the avenue, the door, the gate, the opening that God has in store to take you to the next place in your destiny. I don't know where that is. That there's a birthing process. Woo, this ain't in my notes. I got to, that's just, there's a birthing process that happens. That little child that's inside that woman's womb that is growing, it is warm, it is comfortable, it is wonderful, it, it, is, it feels good, everything's supplied, all of its food is supplied, its oxygen is supplied. Everything is just beautiful, but there comes a day that there is a birthing process that happens and you have to move 
from that womb into the regular world, into the real world. And that birthing process is uncomfortable. And sometimes the afflictions that you're in is simply the birthing process that will take you from the womb into the next destiny that God has in store for you, the next place. That child can only live in that womb so long, and if it stays there too long, it'll die. Just like you, you can only stay in that comfort zone so long before God has to move you out into the next place. Don't get anxious about it. Don't get frustrated and get worried about it and, and pull in your hair, so to speak. But instead say, I am going to walk with God and I'm going to trust him. When you get anxious and you begin to worry, what you do is you open the door and you allow the enemy to have a foothold in your life. Oh, you don't plan to do that. No, I don't plan to do that. But if you're not careful, you'll begin to speak things. And what it does is it opens the door and allows the enemy begin to, to have a little avenue into your life and into your family. Be careful what you worry about. This is what Job said. After he had lost his children, he had lost everything. He made this comment, and it has stuck with me for years. He, stuck, he made this comment, that that I have feared has come upon me. That that I have feared has come upon me. Don't let the enemy have a foothold in your life by worrying and being anxious over things that you cannot change and you cannot fix and you have no control over. Instead, say, God is at the helm, helm of my life and at the helm of every situation in my life. I want to give you just a couple things here to work on as you begin to walk in this and I'll finish up. One is keep a right attitude. Attitude is one character that makes a difference among people. It's powerful force that works in people's lives. Don't pay it. If you don't pay attention to it, it'll quickly destroy you. It has to do primarily with the way that we react to a situation. My mother used to say this to me when I was young. I don't remember. She hadn't said it to me in years, but she said it to me a lot when I was young. She said, you can't control what happens to you but you can control 100% of how you respond to what happens to you. You can't, you can't stop the bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from making a nest in your head. You, you can't stop somebody from saying ugly things to you or taking your parking spot or, or saying ugly things that when, they, when, you, when they drive past you or telling your kids something. You can't change none of that. But what you can change is how you respond to it and the attitude with which you handle the situation. If your attitude is positive, you'll always rise to the top. If your attitude is negative, you will always settle to the bottom. If you find the good in people, you will always rise high. But if you always are looking for the bad, if you're looking for the problem, if you're looking for how to discover what's wrong in somebody's life, you will always sink to the bottom. Keep a positive attitude and find the best in people that are around you. There are some of the people that are always happy no matter what the condition is. They can come to the house of God. They can raise their hands. They can worship and clap and leave. And you and I never know the struggle that they're truly in. You know why? It's not because the struggle isn't real and it's not because it's not affecting them. It's because they have learned the secret art of keeping their attitude right and worshiping God and saying, whatever happens, God's in control. Our happiness and success depends not so much on the problems we face, but how we respond to those things. A positive attitude can turn a situation around. I heard a story just the last few days about a fellow that his wife was shopping in the store and um, she found a dress that she liked and and so he took the dress and was going to walk to the counter and pay for it while she finished looking for some other things. And when he got to the counter, you know, he said, I was just smiling. He said, I wasn't smiling about anything in particular. I was just smiling. And, um, and the lady looked at me and she said, uh, man, that's a wonderful smile you got. And he said, well, thank you. And, 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 and he was, you know, just trying to get ready to pay the bill, had his credit card out. And, and um, she said, did, did you know that we got a sale coming up on this exact piece of clothing on the weekend? Let me check and see what I can do for you. And so she went and at, talked to somebody and came back and said, I can give you that sale right now. And, and so they gave a discount on it. And then she said, while she was ringing it up, she looked and there was a little 
part of the hem that wasn't exactly right. And she said, did you notice this hem isn't exactly right on this dress? And he said, well, I hadn't noticed it. And, and she said, well, it isn't. Let me see. I think I can get another discount for you. And he said before he left, he paid seven. He, had, he only paid 25% of what the dress was selling for. You say, well, that's just a crazy story, Pastor. No, no, no. There's something about a positive attitude that people respond to. And they want to help and they want to be a part of you. But when you're negative and you're downcast and you feel like the world's crashing in on you and, you and you're saying that, people will want to check out on you. They don't want to hear all that. They don't want to be bothered by that. He said, no, without a doubt, if I'd have walked up there with a frown, with a bad attitude, he said, I'm sure the lady would not have went out of her way at all. The right attitude will allow you to choose action instead of withdrawal. <clears throat> It'll make you choose growth instead of stagnation. That's what happens when you get a bad attitude. You, you get all puffed up and you're mad. You can't make no progress with God. You will become absolutely stagnant in your place with God. He won't take you to another level. He won't give you another gift. He won't help you to do anything more as long as you sit there with a sour attitude and you're only thinking of yourself. It'll make you choose courage instead of fear when you have the right attitude. Your attitude will help you find the good in every situation. Attitude is more important than money. It's more important than circumstances. It's more important than the failures that you've had in your life. It's more important than what people say. It's more, people, more important than what people think. It's more important than your appearance. It's more important than your education. Happiness is determined 10% by what happens to you and 90% by how you react. This little illustration I want to give you is that there was a gentleman that wrote a, he's a very famous children's author, he wrote a book. He went to 23 different publishers and every one of them turned him down and said, we just don't think you can make it. We don't think it's a good book. We don't think anybody would be interested. But he wouldn't give up. He said, somebody needs to read this book. It's good. Finally, he had a breakthrough. Somebody decided to publish it. That book that had been turned down 23 times went on to sell over 6 million copies. You see, he could have quit after the first time or the second time. He could have said it's not worth it. He could have fit into those publishers' paradigm that said, this is the way we want a children's book to look, and this is the way we want it to sound. This, we do that sometimes at church. You ever realize that? We, we're kind of in a paradigm, and we want it to be exactly the way it's always been. That's what these publishers were telling this guy. But he said, no, 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 this is a good book. And he was right, and it went on to be very successful. Here's the thing I want to finish up with. You need to position yourself for the journey. If you're in a bind and you feel like there's trouble, if you feel like you're being afflicted, if you feel like trouble struck out in your life, repent of any unknown sin that you have in your life. That ought to be the first thing that we do. Lord, if there's anything in me that's not right, forgive me, wash me, cleanse me, give me a clean heart and a right spirit. That's what David prayed. Give me a clean heart and a right spirit, Lord. The second thing you need to do is refuse to wallow in self-pity. Don't engage in it. Don't get in it at all. Third thing, you need to focus on God and not your condition. God is a specialist in turning your bad situation into something that is wonderful. When you and everybody else has given up, God is still working for you. <clears throat> focus on God and not the problem of the condition. Here's the thing that's very important that we forget. Focus on one problem at a time. Just one problem at a time. Quit trying to solve all your problems on the same day. Quit trying to pray a prayer for everything that's wrong in your life at one time. Pinpoint and focus one thing that you're ready to go after. Pray for that one thing. Maybe you got high blood pressure and sugar, diabetes and, and, and skin conditions and all. Instead of praying for all of that at one time, just pick one and begin to pray for it. Begin to speak to that thing. Begin to release your faith and let your faith grow and build for that one thing. And then as that's taken care of, begin to pray for the next thing until that's taken care of and the next thing until that's taken care of. Don't be overwhelmed by so many things at one time. 
Do not think or confess negatively. Never let anybody push you to the level where you will speak against yourself or against your family. Negative confessions and thoughts will put you in trouble. Hold firmly to God's promise and then expect a divine solution. When you got the right attitude, you're gonna come out on top. No matter what happens, you're gonna come out on top. I wanna give you, and I'm finished right here. I wanna give you these prayer points. Tonight, I want you to pray, God, forgive me. God, I know that the affliction that's come into my life, you have the power to overcome. God, the situation that seems like it's about to rule over me because I cannot figure out how to beat it. God, you know exactly what's gonna happen and there's an expiration date on this problem. I believe you're gonna handle it for me. Every power that's inside of you, push it towards faith and believe in what God can and will do. Let's pray together right now before we finish. Father, I come before you right now for every person that is under the sound of my voice. God, I rebuke every spirit of stronghold that has pushed back your people. I come against the strong man that has arisen in the lives of the people that's watching this video. I come against those things that have caused them to believe that there is no hope in their life, that they might as well give up, give in, and quit. I speak right now to those people that are struggling and thinking, this is the last, this is the last time I can make it. I'm telling you right now, God is for you and he is not against you. God answers and relieves the people that are in affliction. He is an ever-present help in time of need. God, I pray right now that you would begin to stir up in them the gift of faith that you placed in all of us, that you would begin to stir up in them the things that they can begin to believe for things that they never even realized that they had the power to believe for. I pray for our families and for our children. I pray for sickness and disease. I take authority by the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Ghost that's operating in me and through the word of God that says I have authority over every sickness and every disease. I command these things to be broken off of people's lives. I command the spirit of, of poverty to be broken off of people's lives through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I come against the spirit of fear, that strong man that's been released around the world. I come against the spirit of fear and command it right now by the authority of the word of God to be broken off of people right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I release the spirit of faith to begin to flow, that people will begin to believe that God is able to work in their situation and do the miraculous in their lives. God, I pray for our country. I pray, God, that it be healed. I pray, God, that you would give our leaders wisdom and guidance. Help us, God, to overcome the spirits of this world that would seek to shut us down and keep us in submission to the government and to the things of this world that has no authority that wants to come from God, but instead is trying to seek its own authority. I believe right now, God, that you are the divine intervention for this hour, for this day, for this nation, for this city, for this region, for your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. I love you guys. Thank you for being with us tonight. Take time to share this with a friend. Share this with your circle of influence. Let them be blessed and know that God is working for them and he will answer them in a time of trouble. We love you. God bless. Bye-bye.